What up African family and welcome to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, African Myth and Legend 101, where I tell various stories from African myth and legend. Today, we're going to tell the Mbundu myth of Sudika Mbambi, the Angolan demigod. And as always, don't forget to support the home team on Patreon.com and go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can get helpful illustrative infographics on African history, links to Patreon and Afrographics, are in the description box below. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. To truly understand the myth of Sudika Mbambi, we must first know the story of his father, Kemanaze. Kemanaze is featured in the myth about his efforts to marry a goddess, the daughter of the sun and the moon. This is how Sudika became half human and half god. Kimanaze's first obstacle was how to communicate his desire to a goddess who lived in the heavens. He wrote a letter to the sun and asked several animals and birds to carry it to the sky world for him, but each one said that it could not. At last, a frog offered to take the message. The frog knew that the heavenly water carriers came down to earth each day to fetch water from a certain well. He hid in the well. When the water carriers came, he slipped into the water jug. He was carried up to the heavens where he left the letter and he returned to earth by the same means. When Kimanaze received no response to his letter, he sent the frog with a second one. This time, the son sent a letter back saying that he would agree to the marriage if the appropriate gifts were made. The frog continued the negotiations until an agreement was reached. Kimanaze then faced the problem of how to bring his bride to earth. Again, the frog solved the problem. While the young woman was sleeping, he removed her eyes. When she woke and could not see, she told her parents. The son sent messengers to a diviner to find out why his daughter had become blind. The diviner told the messengers that she was under a spell. If she did not go to earth and marry Kimanaze, she would die. Upon hearing this, the son told the messengers to bring his daughter to earth. They carried her down and left her at the well. The frog restored her eyes, and she and Kimanaze were married. Not long afterward, Kimanaze's father sent him away on business. While the younger Kimanaze was away, monsters attacked the family's home and killed everyone but Kimanaze's new wife, whose divine status protected her. In time, the young couple had twin sons, a miraculous child named Sudika Mbambi, and his brother Kabandungulu. Before Sudika Mbambi was born, his mother, the sky goddess, heard a voice coming from her womb. The voice said that his sword was coming, his knife, his kalembi, his staff, and he himself. A kalembi is a mythical plant a life tree that every individual is born with. The growth and fate of the Kalembi reflects the life of the individual. As soon as Sudika Mbambi was born, he told his mother his name. His mother then heard a second voice coming from her womb. It repeated the same words Sudika Mbambi had spoken. In moments, a second son was born, who told his mother he was Kabundungulu. Then the two boys miraculously created a new home for their parents, whose home had been destroyed by the Makisi, a many-headed monster that had killed their grandfather. Sudika Mbambi told his brother to stay with their parents while he went off to fight the Makisi. He said that if his Kalembe withered, they would know he was dead. On his quest for the Makisi, Sudika Mbambi met four Kipalendes supernatural beings with magical powers. At first, they helped him fight the Makisi, but after the monsters were destroyed and Sudika Mbambi won a wife from a destructive elderly woman, the Kepalendes turned against him out of envy. They threw him into a deep hole and took his wife for their own. Sudika Mbambi followed a path that opened up before him until he reached the realm of Kalunga Ngombe, the god of the underworld. 
he asked for Kalunga Ngombe's daughter in marriage. The god of the underworld told him that first he had to rescue her from the great serpent Kineoka Kiatomba. After Sudika Mbambi succeeded in killing the serpent, the god told him next he had to kill Kimbiji Kayamalanda, the, the crocodile that was master of the underworld abyss. The powerful crocodile pulled Sudika Mbambi into the water and swallowed him whole. At the same moment, Kamandungulu saw that his brother's life tree had withered. He set out to rescue him, following Sudika Mbambi's route to the underworld. Kamandungulu killed the crocodile and brought his brother back to life. Kalunga Ngombe gave his daughter to Sadika Mbambi. On their way home, the brothers drove off the Kabalandes and recovered Sadika Mbambi's first wife. Kamandungulu asked his brother for one of his wives, since he had none. The brothers fought and fought, but since neither could overcome the other, they decided to separate. They both went to the heavens, Sudika Mbambi traveling east and his brother traveling west. Sudika Mbambi became the thunder and Kumbundungulu became the thunder's echo. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can support the home team on Patreon.com. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.